It's great to be here tonight, and I want to thank you all for coming this evening. I host a radio show called Courage Cocktail Radio, and it's out of Orange County, which is where I live. And we also have um, a story to get. This is my daughter, Emma. We lived in New York City in 2005. We all relocated to the Triangle. And we had a chance to explore all parts of the Triangle, including Chapel Hill, North Raleigh, and um, Hillsborough. One of the reasons we left was that I am a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor. Uh, this is in 2003. I'm glad to tell you this is my real hair. And um, that's very sweet. Um, my daughter made sure that this face had hair in it. This is the real hero of the story. This is Mr. McClymont, my husband Bill, and he became Mr. Mom for about nine months. And as you see, there's little candles on a birthday cake there. It's for my daughter. And one of the things that we noticed is on the refrigerator, courage started becoming a very important part of our conversations. As you notice, um, this is a piece of concrete. Our lives had all of a sudden become two-dimensional. And through this experience of survival as a family, we started realizing we had indeed a third dimension. And that this concrete may not be the perfect foil for our family to advance. We had a lawn in our apartment. We moved this little baby pot of grass from one side of the lawn or from the apartment to the other during the course of the day. This, well, most of you guys are mowing your lawn. The McClymonts were just moving it. <laughs> and um, I have to say that sunshine is golden. We came to find a little bit more grass, and surely we found it. This is my daughter, who's grown up a little bit, going to Duke in the garden center. To the left-hand side, I want you to notice the equipment. That lovely little mouse is looking. He's wearing a little red helmet. And this is a way for me to explain to you that during this whole process, we had certainly learned how to prepare. This um, is a picture of sweet potatoes. I used two sweet potatoes to stretch my daughter's shoes. She was going from one school in New York City to a new one in Raleigh. And those shoes became very important to who she was. So at nighttime, I was frightened that those shoes wouldn't fit her growing feet, and I stretched it with these little two sweet potatoes. What I'd learned in the process, of course, is those sweet potatoes were stretching a whole lot more than shoes. They were stretching our family and myself. And that got distilled in a small book that I wrote and published with Lulu, and um, describing the relationship we all have with fear and how fear influences our decision making. Believe it or not, that book came out. I got a lot of emails. I got letters. And unlike other authors that get blocked before they write, I got blocked after. I shut down. I grew very, very quiet. I didn't know what to say. I had a poet friend. And Bart Barker said to me, Leanne, you've got to start listening to this great radio station in Orange County. Very different than commercial radio and very different than public radio. Um, Right now, you're going to look at a format I designed. In order to get on that radio, I said, I'm not going to just sit down and talk to people. I want to format expert guest for the first half of the show. Second half of the show is a guest with guts. That's somebody who's followed the expert's advice and who could actually live to talk about it. So here's an example of the recipe, an expert and then somebody who had the courage to try something new and then talk to you guys about it. So the format had never been tried, but I was willing to give it a shot. And um, the format has held the attention of our listeners. In the beginning, we started out in June 2011. Bill and I put together the show. We did a lot of our work with um, telephones, people and experts coming over the radio through the phone. And then as we started to get better at this, um, we started having more people want to come on the program. And without much effort, we were having experts come to us to say, we like what you're doing. We have something we want to talk to your listeners about. And before you knew it, we were able to attract a vastly rich environment of local talent, people who are knowing how to do new things. For example, this is a lady who does videos to help people do marketing on their websites. All of a sudden, the children started coming. This is a little girl. And her coach, this is a man who owns a swim school out at the Triangle Aquatic Center. And this is a student who actually was frightened, too frightened to learn how to swim. But she went there, and she overcame that fear. So I invited her as a guest with guts. And let me tell you, guests with guts um, 
have a remarkable way of opening up avenues. One of the skills that we learned is that iBiblio is a technical aspect. While we were doing live recording, a live studio broadcast, we were recording it, and it was being held up on, um, in digital format on iBiblio. That opened the world to us because now there was a convergence between radio and digital platform. So all of a sudden, not only did we have a live performance, we had a podcast that was getting distributed on all of our experts' websites. Not only that, we were able to find Facebook as being a central portal for communicating about our show, our guests, and it gave us a chance to get some feedback. By August, we had 10,000 interactions. And I say that 20 seconds is not a lot of time to talk about this. However, I have to let you know that the advantage of using social media was that it was able to make people think about taking their own time and figuring out what it is that's important to them and listening to it at will. The question mark there is that, oh my goodness, what is it that we've done? We had no preparation for this. And so I took a class over at UNC School of Journalism. And I said, i got to get better at this. This is a bigger responsibility. And so one of the first things I did was appoint Bill and Emma as my reporters and to provide us with real research. In this case, it was a show about fencing. They went there. I went with them. And, um, and I wanted you to know that all these programs include a great deal of research and investigation before they air. Sometimes it's fun. Finally, I want to thank you all. I want to thank the WCOM, my little radio station I broadcast from. I want to thank iBiblio, UNC, my listeners, and most importantly, PKN. I'm very grateful to be with you tonight. Thank you.